Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, come before you in the name of your Son. And I ask, Father, for your grace and for your mercy that you would speak to us this day, that you would help us, that you would strengthen us, that you would get more glory out of us, that we would learn to walk as your servants and to be at peace in your sovereignty that your real and true spiritual prosperity would be something in our lives that we would be healed in the midst of affliction in a fallen world that we would shine as lights that we would be what we are new creatures in Christ Jesus Father, help us. If there is someone here today who does not know you, that they might know you today as Savior and Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I want us to open up our Bibles to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. I have known for about a week that I was to preach here and the Lord had laid something upon my heart and then early in the week I was carried away back to Illinois. Um, my mother is there in the hospital uh, suffering with cancer. It's about to take her life. And um, But in a sense that can be a good thing. She's been a Christian for over 65 years and she belongs to him. And she's going where I would choose to go if my work here were finished. I want us to go to Romans chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, a bondservant of Christ Jesus, called as an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God. In this one verse is found volumes. Men could write for ages on these few words that we find here. And I believe that the Lord has laid these words on my heart not only for you but for me. For in these words are found almost everything we need to know about who we are and what we are supposed to be doing. In these words are found great freedom and strength and joy, soundness in the Christian faith if we would only take these few words to heart. You know, sometimes we seek to grasp so many things in Scripture. We seek to know so many things, and yet the little most important things escape us and cause us ruin. I know of one man who sat out in his life to be consumed by one passage. He decided that he would take one passage of Scripture Although he would not neglect the study of other scripture, he would take one passage and seek to know it all his life. And he chose Psalms 23. And you say, well, how long can you stay in one chapter? Well, the Lord is my shepherd. You begin with the. Not a Lord, but the Lord. There are volumes in that one three-letter word because it defines his relationship over all creation but especially over me. And so we seek to know so many things and it is important to know many things but sometimes it's good to return to some of the things that are most basic. Now Paul presents himself here. Paul, the Apostle, used as much as any man has ever been used in the history of the world. And yet, let's look at the way he describes himself. He says, Paul, a bond servant. He says, you want to know who I am? I am a bond servant. It's from the Greek word doulos. It means slave. I am a slave. Now, let's just stop here for a moment. If someone were to ask you, in a play on words, to choose one word, to identify yourself 
would this be the first word, the prominent word that popped into your mind? A slave. Would it? Do I need to go any farther? Do I need to ask you any more questions? Do I need to say another word? If you were to only grasp, if I were to only grasp what I just asked, we would find so much healing and so much growth and so much power in the Christian life. You see, the thing that first pops into your mind is the, probably the one thing you think most about yourself and that controls you. Well, I'm this or I'm that. I have this title or that title. And none of those things ultimately bring joy. None of those things ultimately bring pleasure. They may bring prestige, the respect of men, and so many other things, but they'll bring nothing from God. Remember, those things which are highly esteemed by men are often despised by God. My question to you, if someone were to say, who are you? The first word that popped into your mind and out your mouth, would it be, I am a slave. And I've written a few definitions down about a slave. First of all, it's one who completely belongs to his owner and whose entire life is shaped by the will of his master. Now let's stop again. I know this is simple. It may seem trite. There will be no reward for this. But just think about these simple words. Would you describe yourself as someone who completely, totally belonged to someone else and whose life was completely and totally shaped by the will of a master. Now you understand. You could spend years here, couldn't you? Absolutely years here. Who are you, Paul Washer? Oh, I'm a preacher, I'm a director, I'm this, I'm that. All of it's worthless. Titles of men. The first thing that ought to pop into my mind, I am a slave. Wholly and completely I belong to another, not myself. I have been bought with a price and my entire life is shaped by the will of the one who bought me. Now I want you to know that the Bible teaches us that you... Well, let me put it this way. I hate to quote him, but I will. Bob Dylan. In his Christian years, so-called Christian years, he wrote a song. And the song said this, You've got to serve somebody. You see, it's not a question of, are you going to be a slave? It is only a question of, whose slave are you? You are a slave to something. As a matter of fact, our culture needs to understand that those today in our culture who claim to be most free, most autonomous, are actually those who are in the greatest amount of slavery. You are a slave you are. The only question is, to what? First of all, in the Bible, you don't have to turn here, I've written these verses out. In Romans 6.16 it says, Do you not know that when you present yourselves to someone as slaves for obedience, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin resulting in death or of obedience resulting in righteousness? Do you realize that you can be a slave to sin? Now this needs to take two applications here this morning. First of all, all of us as Christians will struggle with certain things. We all have holes in our armor. We all have battles that we must deal with that are personal. personal. What may not be a struggle for you may be a great struggle for me. So we all struggle with sin. But I want you to know that in Christ Jesus there is an overcoming of that sin. And there is a great difference between a believer who struggles with sin and grows 
progresses in victory over that sin, there's a great difference between that person and a church member who is constantly in bondage and slavery to sin. I struggle with sin more than most of you would probably even believe. We all do. But in that struggle, there is a trust in Christ and there is a growing victory. For He says in Ezekiel, I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and all your idols. There is a struggle, but there is at the same time victory going more and more towards that goal which is conformity to Jesus Christ. But if you're here this morning and your life is marked by a constant slavery to sin, then maybe you should talk to someone here. Because the Christian life is not marked by bondage to sin. And there are many people who are enslaved to sin even though they sit in church every Sunday. If that is you, realize that we want to speak with you. We want to talk to you compassionately and with mercy and with truth. Don't remain as you are in bondage to sin. And you say, Immediately when I say something like that, people are thinking, yes, bondage to pornography, bondage to immorality. Yes, those things. But there are other things that can be indications that you do not know Him. Bondage to anger. Bondage to hatred. Bondage to bitterness and unforgiveness. Are you in bondage to those things? You see, you are a slave. The only question is, to whom? Or to what? Go on. You can also be a slave to the glory of men. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 5, When you pray, you are not to be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners, so that they may be seen by men. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. One of the most terrifying passages in all the Scriptures that God will give you the desires of your heart. You say, what's terrifying about that? Think about it for a moment. These Pharisees, the only thing they desired was the glory, the respect of other men. They desired to have a reputation among other men. That was the desire of their heart and God gave them their desire. Not just meagerly, but He gave them their desire in full. And then they went to hell. Now you say, yes, we shouldn't be like those Pharisees. But, but think about it. Let's pull this for a moment out of the religious context, just for a moment. You say, religiously, I don't desire the glory of men. But do you desire the glory of men in other things? Do you desire their applause, their agreement, the nod of their head? Do you desire to fit in and be acceptable to this present age? You are so shaped by your desire to have the glory of men that you can't even see it. The clothing you wear, someone else tells you what's in fashion and you do what they tell you. What kind of car you drive, the home you own, everything about you is shaped much more than you could ever imagine by the desire to be respected of men for them to honor you. You see, one of the things that we've got to realize is these things have a lot more control on us than what we're actually willing to admit or may even see. One of the greatest declarations of this is in a very simple thing called, as I've said already, fashion. Especially for you young people. Do you realize how much you are shaped by what everyone else is going to think about you. But very rarely are you shaped by the commandments of Scripture that says, be this way and don't be that way. So you see, we have to be very careful. We read these things and we think, well, that has nothing to do with me. No, it has absolutely everything to do with you and with me. We are shaped by our desire for the glory of men. One of the reasons that we are so afraid at times to soul win or to, to witness to people, it's not because they're going to bash us in the head with a stick. It's because we don't want them to think that we're some kind of strange person. 
You see, we're shaped by our desire to have the glory of men. And you can be a slave to that.